Hi everyone, hello everyone, wherever you might be, happy Easter. Oh no, <laughs> I look like Ted Bundy, oh no. Okay, well, I'm a lover and not a murderer. <laughs> so happy Easter everyone. Uh, and uh, Christ the Lord is risen, he has risen indeed, yes indeed. The stone was rolled away and we are all redeemed in Jesus Christ name of those that come to the Lord yes so let's let's open with uh, one of my favorites Christ the Lord is risen today <laughs> Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia. Son of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply, Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done, Alleluia. Fought the fight, the battle won, Alleluia. Now our sun's eclipse is o'er, Alleluia. Lo, he sets in blood no more, Alleluia. Vain the stone, the watch, the seal, Alleluia. Christ has burst the gates of hell, Alleluia. Death in vain forbids his rise, Alleluia. Christ has opened paradise, Alleluia. Lives again our glorious King, Alleluia. Where all death is now thy sting, Alleluia. Dying once he all does save, Alleluia. Or the grave, Alleluia. So we know where Christ has led, Alleluia. Falling our exalted head, Alleluia. Made like him, like he we rise, Alleluia. As the cross, the grave, the skies, Alleluia. What though once we perished all, Alleluia. Partners in our parents' fall, Alleluia. Second life we all receive, Alleluia. In our heavenly Adam live, Alleluia. Risen with him, we upward move, Alleluia. Still we seek the things above, Alleluia. 
still pursue and kiss the sun. Ah, hallelujah. Seated on his father's throne. Ah, hallelujah. Hail the Lord of earth and heaven. Ah, hallelujah. Praise to thee by both be given. Ah, hallelujah. Thee we greet triumphant now. Ah, hallelujah. Hail the resurrection thou. Ah, Amen. Hey everyone, so that's uh, one of my favorites. Whoops, we're not going there yet. We have a lot of uh, things to uh, be thankful for this Easter Sunday. Of course, I did not go to church. Um, I watched it on a live stream. And uh, of course, I watched it also. Um, they had something uh, from Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which they were doing. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I'm looking very Ted Bundy today. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is probably the bow tie. It must be the bow tie. Yeah. So anyway, folks, I'm so glad to, to share this Easter Sunday. Uh, with you now today today we had the threat of storms that were going to blow in from the deep south but it did not arrive yet it's to our west so the weather's still good in richmond um, i did go out for a little bit of walk and i did have a wonderful easter brunch today of course we couldn't eat at the restaurant so we had to order it so i had eggs benedict with shrimp and grits and then later on uh, we had a delicious uh, we had a coconut cake for dessert and it was very delicious, and I'm very thankful for that. Let's read our scripture for Easter Sunday that we have. Oh, yes. Uh, so as you all know, uh, Christ was, uh, when, when the women, it was the women uh, who had the testimony um, that, uh, you know, went to the tomb and he was not there. So the angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Matthew 28, 5, 6. He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over the hands of sinners, over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Luke 24, 6, 7. Now this is very interesting, you see, because it was the women that first uh, noticed that Jesus was missing. Well, back in the days of those, you know, back in those days, a woman's testimony was only a little better than a slave. <laughs> so who would believe those women folk, right? So actually that gives more credence to the Bible story because if this had all been, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of, you know, made up, you know, fabricated, if this had been fabricated, it would have been the men that discovered that Jesus was not there. But in the case, in this case, it was Mary Magdalene and Mary and a few other women followers who discovered that Jesus was not there. Uh, this is very important because it suggests, you know, that um, the the people that that believed the women knew that this was true, right? And so the early Christians uh, risked their lives, risked their lives to be killed uh, because they knew that Jesus had come back to life. And folks, that's that's what it all is. The resurrection is 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 all. That's the the cornerstone of Christianity. Had Christ not been resurrected, our faith would be in vain. That's what Paul said. Yeah. So the resurrection is the hallmark of Christianity. That is the basis of our faith. Uh, the teachings of Jesus, and of course, uh, the the healings. Uh, the, the miracles he did are all part of the wonderful story. But had, had Christ not been, uh, had Christ not come back 
and had he not been resurrected, our faith would be in vain. So that's why we are Christians. That's why we know that life is eternal. And through Christ, who paid, uh, who paid uh, our debt on the cross, uh, we are saved, not by works, but by grace. Um, so isn't that a beautiful story? It's a miracle of the resurrection. Now, of course, Christ was born of a virgin. We all know that. But even if he had been born of a virgin, had he not died, and had he not been crucified, and had he not been, uh, had he not been resurrected, then we would have no faith. We would have no hope. You know, that is, that's what it's all about. That's why we're Christians. Yeah. So uh, uh, that's the basis of everything. Uh, so let's do another song for you. I'd like to sing a song for you uh, that's a very, you know, favorite of mine. Um, and uh, I think uh, I'd like to sing it for you. Um, and uh, if you want to sing along, feel free to do so. Uh, this one is called, How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord my God, when I an awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great. Art. And when I think of God, His Son not sparing, sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration And there proclaim, my God, how great thou art Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee Art, how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art yes Yes, an old hymn, How Great Thou Art. It's really true. Yes, it's a miracle, isn't it? I'm so glad to, 
to uh, share this Easter Sunday with you. Woo! Yeah. Uh, so let me take off my glasses. Oh, there we go. Uh, now I look a little bit more stylish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I wore my blue. You know, Easter Sunday is a very uh, big deal. You know, big deal. But, of course, with all this uh, quarantine, we couldn't have a Easter parade on Monument Avenue. So I did see folks out there holding up little Easter bunnies and going, hey, ho, ho, hey, ho, ho. <laughs> so I waved back. Yeah. Um, it is. It felt weird. Also, I just celebrated my birthday uh, this past Wednesday, and of course, none of the restaurants were open. So I ordered Mexican, and uh, I said, "Hey, don't worry, I'm legal. <laughs> I'm legal." But uh, I had some Mexican dinner, and that was nice. And um, you know, it's just I guess everything this year feels very different, um, and we're sort of confronted. It's really a test of faith because a lot of people, I think are wondering when will we get back to normal when will we get back to normal and i guess at this point we just don't know you know it's just a matter of time and uh we need to to be close to god and uh, I just think it's it's very difficult when we can't come together of course i've always been kind of a homebody i have to admit i've always been uh one to stay at home uh you know but it w was nice last year. Last year, of course, I did go to Easter Sunday service, and then we went out to brunch at the tobacco company. And uh, I think people are missing some of the traditions that they do because, you know, when things are shut, shut down, when things are closed, you can't gather in public places. You can't go out to eat. You can't go to church, although I think we should be allowed to go to church. Uh, <laughs> that's something I don't understand. Uh, you can go kill your baby at the local abortion clinic, but you can't go to church. <laughs> Somehow you can't congregate at church, but the abortion clinics are open. I guess they figure, you know, oh, well, that's okay. But uh, I, I, I start to wonder, do, are they trying to get rid of us or something? But anyway, folks, uh, I'm very thankful that what Jesus did for me and what Jesus did for all of us. And as I mentioned before, you know, had he not died on the cross, we wouldn't have any uh, reason to be hopeful or thankful we would just be uh, lost you know totally lost luckily you know he did pay the price for our sins and I'm very grateful for that he he was under the law oh oh I'm not outside no behind me is a church I don't know where this church is I think it's some country church somewhere <laughs> that's my employment yeah Resurrection Day, yes. Oh, that's right. We do call it Resurrection Day. And we say, Christ the Lord is risen. Christ the Lord is risen. Indeed, indeed. Because uh, that's how we, you know, that's what we say. Um, I talked to the neighbors next door. And uh, they said they had plenty of toilet paper. I tried to, you know, say, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Of course, they, I don't know if they're saved people. Uh, one, you know, they have dyed hair, <laughs> you know, dyed hair, uh, look a little bit cuckoo. <laughs> but, uh, of course, there are a lot of safe people with tattoos, you know, not everyone can dress nice. Uh, but, uh, anyway, folks, how was your Easter? I know if, uh, you know, I know it's hard being separated from, uh, public gatherings and church, but we can, we can always have it in our heart. You know, that's the big, big thing is that Easter is in our heart, you know, uh, well, the resurrection, uh, I, I had another Bible verse. I can't remember where it went. Uh, so, uh, wait a minute. I think I have it somewhere in here. So anyway, folks, I'm just very glad to, to share Easter Sunday with everyone. Uh, and, uh, oh, there was a very fun thing in Virginia Beach. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a very fun thing in Virginia Beach. So, uh, in Virginia Beach, uh, there was a church in Virginia Beach, and all the ca cars lined up together, and they spelled, He is risen. Yeah, He is risen. They spelled it out in, in car. <laughs> and I know some churches are having drive through They had a drive through uh drive through service and uh, where people could go th drive through and and hear the gospel message uh, everyone is coming up with creative ways uh, th they couldn't have an you know creative ways to worship they couldn't have uh, uh, Easter egg hunt so what they did was have the little children have played video games Easter egg hunt video games and 
you know, maybe we need this. Maybe we need alternative styles of, of worship. Um, so this is what it says. Uh, uh, so Jesus, okay. So so the, the gospel message is that, uh, this is what Jesus said. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? And that's John 11, 25, 26. Um, and so after Jesus, I believe after Jesus uh, was not found in his tomb, then he started appearing in different places. So he appeared to the disciples. Um, he appeared to his followers. You know, he would he was everywhere. And uh, and 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 like he was still alive and they couldn't believe this, you know. So those early Christians, what happened was what happened was they didn't care if they died because they knew after Jesus came back, they knew that this was the truth. And the, the early church was called the way, the way. And they knew that Jesus was really the son of God. He fulfilled the scriptures and he came back as he promised. And now we're still waiting for him. You know, um, we've been in the last days for thousands of years. Um, you know, well, 2000 plus years. And so when people say we're in the last days, well, we've been in the last days. What they really mean is when the trumpet shall sound and we're waiting for the witnesses and for Jesus to come back again. Um, and there's going to be many false uh, Christ, you know, the Antichrist. Um, so we have to be very careful. But but that's why, uh, you know, I read a book called The Case for Christ. And if you're not a Christian, you ought to read it, too, because it's a really good book. And it's by Lee Strobel. And one of the arguments for the Christian church is that why were these people willing to die uh, you know, they didn't have, if they were making up a story, they could just retract their story and they, they would be set free. But these people were willing to die for their faith because they knew something that, that was true. They knew that Jesus was resurrected. And, and, and so that's why we have the church. And that's why, that's why he, everything as it was written, that's why it was fulfilled. So that's why people were willing to die because they, they saw Jesus come back to life. Uh, they, well, they saw him after he had been crucified. And these were his disciples and his followers. And they're like, wait a minute, he's supposed to be dead, but he's alive. And it was witnessed to hundreds of people. Hundreds of people saw Jesus. Now, skeptics will say, skeptics will say, you know, these, these, these were old and day times, so, you know, nobody had cell phones or the internet then, and if it happened today, we could verify, but we can't verify this. But that's where our faith comes in, but I really do believe, you know, in the archaeological evidence, it's very strong that this all happened, and this is why we celebrate, this is why we celebrate, uh, Easter Resurrection Sunday because uh, that is the cornerstone of everything, you know, everything that we we do. Um, so how's everyone doing? We have four. Oh no, I'm definitely not a Jew. Uh uh. uh let's see, Easter. Um, I'm not a baritone. I think I'm a. a I think what I am is a tenor. I don't think I'm a baritone. Um, I, I try to, you know, I try to increase my range, but I don't think I'm a baritone. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I thought I had another song that I was going to do. Um, let's see. I would do a, a fun song. Of course, this is not really a Christian song, but um, this is from Mama's Family. <laughs> Sunshine up on high, smiling down below, beams of love from up above to tell you where to go, go. Ray town, oh Ray town, steep 
apples line the way where happy children play and folks you know say hey hey <laughs> return oh return no matter where i stray 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 i'll be homeward bound plant me in the ground in the town we call Bray. yeah uh i'm gonna do another video for that of course that was uh that's a little clip from mama's family uh right down oh right down Oh, I sure do miss Chick-fil-A. You know, I haven't been able to do the cow recently because everything is in the drive-thru. And a lot of people are too afraid to uh, put help me with my suit. Oh, no, Corona. <laughs> so I just have to kind of wing it at home. I kind of miss, you know, miss doing the cow, but I'll probably be back. You know, I think all this thing will be over in mid-May. So I think everything's going back to normal in mid-May. We're just sort of in the thick of it now. But I hear that uh, cases in New York are going down, down, down. And uh, now I don't want to say this is God's punishment, but do you notice that the most liberal states in America are the ones that are having the most problems with this? Washington, California, New York, and New York, of course, uh, last year p uh, passed that you know infanticide bill. Now, you know, I'm not saying God is smiting people because there are many fine people in those states. Uh, you know, many righteous people. And remember, uh, remember what uh, Abraham said, you know, oh, uh, or was it Abraham or Moses? Oh, it was Abraham. You know, God, if there's like one righteous man, will you spare this town? Will you spare Sodom and Gomorrah? And of course, he said, yes, but they couldn't find any righteous people in those places. But there are many righteous people in Washington and California and New York, even though they seem like godless liberal areas. But I just keep wondering, uh oh, you know, maybe God is trying to send a message. <laughs> uh, so get on it, Governor Cuomo and uh, Mayor, Mayor Bablasio. <laughs> they all have those Italian names. I, uh, I, need a, I need an interpreter to pronounce some of those New York names. <laughs> uh, um, so anyway, folks, I'll be coming. Uh, I hope y'all had a nice Easter. I hope that you were, uh, you know, deep in prayer. Of course, I was watching a live stream from Jerusalem earlier, and it was on the 700 Club. Uh, of course, the band, I have to say, the band wasn't the best. Bless their hearts, but uh, they could have had a better musical group uh, or something I was familiar with, <laughs> at least seeing how great thou art. Uh, but it was a it was a uh, contemporary Christian. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm just not into contemporary Christian music. It just feels contemporary Christian music is like the McDonald's of Christian music. <laughs> it's like let's okay, uh, uh, like you know songs about uh, will I dance with you, Jesus? But you know that's very nice, but. It just seems like they, they write, you know, fast food theology and try to fit it into a three minute song with a lot of, you know, upbeat uh, rock, you know, guitars and, and synthesizers and oohs and ahs. But it just does nothing for me. You know, give me some good old southern gospel music, a quartet or or some or church harmonies or old hymns or something. Uh, the, the contemporary Christian does not does not really sit well with me, but uh Oh, I don't think Jesus lied. Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. No, Jesus did not lie. Jesus Jesus is the only man who ever walked the face of, of this earth who, uh, who was without sin, you know? And think on that for a while, because, you know, a lot of us folks are, are very sinful, uh, even, you know, Christians. Uh, so, yeah. So any any Christian who tells you that they don't have sin, um, I'm sorry, but you do, and uh, you know we need to be careful with that. But uh, anyway, folks, uh, I've just I'm very grateful. I think that things are going to get better. I think the economy is going to boom again. I think we will walk in the sun once more. You know, we'll be able to go to restaurants. We'll be able to go to church. We'll be able to. Uh, 
you know, hold gatherings. Now, I'm very disheartened about what our governor has done recently, Governor Northam, you know, Governor Blackface, because uh, he passed a whole bunch of liberal bills, but we knew this was coming, right? He wanted, to, he knows he's leaving office soon, and he wanted to pass something. So he passed a whole bunch of liberal gun bills and liberal LGBTQ. Uh, now, in my opinion, the LGBTQ is the equivalent of the KKK. They are so militant and so uh, disruptive. Uh, and if you don't agree with them, I mean, the LGBTQ, they might not burn a cross on your lawn, but <laughs> they certainly come close because uh, they just you know, push their agenda everywhere. It's in the areas of the schools and now it's in the churches. I don't think, uh, you know, I think that a lot of things, I think the church, a lot of church has gone to hell in a handbasket, so to speak. But anyway, folks, we need to pray. These are very trying times. And uh, I just want to, you know, touch base with everyone. If, if you're feeling lonely, if you're, if you're out there and you feel abandoned, remember there is hope because remember that Jesus Jesus Christ came to earth as a man and he lived and he died and he was crucified and then he rose again he came back to life that is the most beautiful story because it's true it's true and that's where our faith comes from so if you're feeling like there's no hope for you there is hope in the cross go to the cross go carry your burdens to Jesus because that's what he came to do he came to give us uh, hope and 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 life because we are sinners we are living in sin and that's where our heart are that's why our hearts are broken that's why we you know feel so uh uh you know devastated and oppressed and 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 drop withdrawn because because we have no hope but with jesus we have hope that's what he came to do he fulfilled the scriptures and it's a beautiful story and God sent his only son, that whoever shall believeth in him shall not perish, but have life eternal. Amen. So that's why we're so, so happy, you know, to, uh, to, to stick with uh, the Bible message, the gospel message. Yeah. So how's everybody doing? I won't be here much longer, folks. Uh, nope, you're wrong. The other house was rather empty. Da, da, da. Oh, no, I did not have uh, much Jewish in me at all, in fact. Uh, but, you know, a lot of that is noise. I think 4%. And, you know, some people argue that the Native Americans, uh, you know, some people with Native American ancestry like myself, uh, could actually have uh, Jewish results. Uh, but Mishpohim, Mishpoha, you're my family. You know, we're all one in Christ Jesus. doesn't matter if you're a Jew, a Greek, uh, a Democrat. <laughs> uh, we're all one in Christ Jesus and uh, you know and uh, we're all Jews essentially because you know I was looking at the history of Ireland and they discovered they discovered that the Irish people that the earliest ancestor of Ireland actually came from the Middle East so they came from the Middle East and settled in Ireland that means the Irish are technically Jews the Germans are technically Jews because they come from the tribe of Gab Gad and the tribe of Gad settled in present-day Germany. Now everyone wants to deny this, but um, where did the races come from? The three sons of Noah. So, so you have Shem, who's the father of the Hebrews and the Orientals. Then you have then you have uh, Japheth, Japheth, who's the father of white Europeans, and then you have Ham, who's the father of the Negro race. So uh, that's that's where we all came from. We all came from the, the three sons of Noah. Now these DNA tests are mostly for entertainment value. Okay, I take them at entertainment. I don't I don't think that you know I don't put a lot of stock in them. But it is interesting because you know could the Irish be the lost tribe of Israel? Could the Germans be the lost tribe of Israel? Well, well, really, I think the Irish are probably more likely. You know how the Irish have a lot of instruments that are like the Middle East. Uh, some of the music even that the Irish do and the Irish are very emotional, you know, and the Jews can be pretty emotional, too uh, So I think it's very possible uh, Yeah Shem yeah Walk past the church window where in, in that way. Oh, I don't think so I also have not moved you think where did the cow go? I thought oh, no 
Uh, this is a background. I could try a different background. Let's see. I have different backgrounds that I could try. Um, let's see. I could try another one here. Um, it won't let me change. Oh, come on. Yeah, so I just picked this background because, you know, it's Easter Sunday, and I thought, well, that would be interesting to try um, a different background. Here's the HD wallpaper. Let's see. Um... Okay, I have another background here. Here's a background. Okay, there's a, here's a different background. It's a house, some kind of house. I don't know where it is. I like that one. Um, and I have some more backgrounds. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, this is the... Okay, this is the skyline of Richmond. This is my hometown behind me. Yeah. <laughs> I could do the news. Hello, welcome to the 6 o'clock news. Uh, reporting from Richmond, Virginia, we have a liberal governor who's a cuckoo and who put on blackface. Now the weather. <laughs> um, okay, now let's see. I have another. Uh, I have another picture. Okay, so I have. Uh, okay, they have pictures there. What's another picture I was going to do? Um, all right, well, anyway, those are my pictures. I have this one, of course. I like this one with the crosses behind me. There's the crosses. Hello, hello. Uh, right now, you can pretend that I'm somewhere in the Middle East. And uh, shalom, shalom. I'm in the Middle East. And behind me is the cross, the three, three crosses. Now, why are the three crosses behind me? That's because Jesus died with the two thieves, I think. I think he died between a murderer and a thief. I can't remember. And he said to one of them, you will be with me in my father's house, in my father's kingdom. So, yeah, one well, of the thieves on the cross died and accepted Jesus. We can all do that, right? Now, now th here's the thing. When Jesus was brought before Pontius Pilate, um, he didn't speak much, I think. He wouldn't say anything. And then... Then Pontius Pilate asked the Jews, what do you want me to do with this man? I see no reason to do anything with them. And they said, kill Jesus, give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas, I think, was some sort of Greek. I don't know. And uh, so they wanted Jesus dead. Now, technically, so yes, the Jews did kill Jesus, but it was really the Romans who persecuted him uh, and, and led him to the cross. So when people say the Jews killed Jesus, uh, they weren't alone in doing that. Um, and obviously Jesus was a Jew, uh, oy vey. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm very glad that, uh, I don't know, I think a lot of Jews are coming to the Lord. You know, there's a lot of Messianic Jews who realize that Jesus is the Son of God. And a lot of them are saying, you know, praise the Lord. And a lot of Muslims too, a lot of Muslims are coming to the Lord too. And they're saying, you know, we're happy that, uh, happy to be saved and get free from the Islamic stuff, you know which is really the devil. You know, Muslims worship Satan. When they talk about Allah, Allah, uh, they're really talking about Satan. Sorry. Sorry to be flippant, but it's the truth, folks, uh, because they are very deceived. And when you're deceived, you're worshiping the enemy because that's what he tries to do. So, uh, yeah, maybe it was Easter Bunny, Big Rabbits, Oshim. Oh, Guy on the roof? What guy? I don't see any guy on the roof. Uh, so anyway, folks, I'm so glad y'all could join me tonight for uh, Easter Sunday live stream. And uh, yeah, I don't see any other. Uh, okay, I'm going to go back to where I was. I think I was. Uh, was this what I used? Here's another background. Oh, yeah, this is. I think this is somewhere in Ireland. Do you like the sheep behind me? I would love to visit Ireland. I mean, I feel that's, you know, of all my ethnicities, I feel Irish the most, even though according to my DNA test, I'm only 14% Irish, but I feel Irish the most. I don't really feel German, although I probably look German, you know, and uh, I don't feel English because I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, cold enough. I'm not austere enough, and I don't feel French because I'm not a snob enough, and I don't feel Lithuanian because I'm not athletic enough, and I don't feel Scottish because I'm not a penny pincher, and I don't really feel Spanish because I don't know how to 
dance around a sombrero. <laughs> I do feel a little Native American, but uh, because I do have courage inside, a lot of strength. But that's why I feel mostly Irish. You know, if, if I had to pick one, I'd pick Irish. I don't know why. I really don't know why, but that's probably what I feel like uh, the most. Um, so what are the numbers on the coronavirus? Does anyone know? Does anyone know what the numbers are? I haven't checked the news lately. I think it's going down, but I know they said that we had like 100,000 people who were who were dying of corona or who had died of corona. Uh, oh, there's a f lilies. Oh, flowers behind me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So the coronavirus, you know, I'm not saying it's nothing, but I, do, I don't know. Do you know anyone who has it? I don't know anyone who has the coronavirus. I don't know any of my... Well, of course, I don't have any friends, really, and I don't really know anybody, but I don't know anyone from my old church who has it. I don't know anyone, any of the neighbors who have it. I, I just feel like, you know, there has there's something not quite right about the way they're reporting these things uh, because, you know, it just doesn't seem to me like to me that there really is a coronavirus or any kind of uh here we go back to the church doesn't seem like there's any coronavirus going on now i could be wrong i know you know i heard a german doctor say that the germans already have antibodies for it and herd immunity is working because the virus is weakening see what they did the mistake they've done is they've quarantined everyone you know they're saying you know shelter in place shelter in place well great that means i have no immunity to corona because i'm not exposed to it and so if it comes back again stronger i have no antibodies for it but the german doctor was saying that people have already been exposed to corona probably months ago before this was even reported as an epidemic and they have antibodies, so I, you know, I really question, and I don't trust the World Health Organization. Uh, that you know, those people just want to get rid of us. I can't believe they say they're going to take people out of their homes. You know, just because you're sick, they're going to take you out of your home. But I really wonder herd immunity. Now Boris Johnson talked about this, and you know, I think they tried to kill Boris Johnson. I think someone purposely gave him the coronavirus. And I think they did that to make him look foolish when actually he wasn't. But I think that they, they tried to do that to Trump and Mike Pence. But, of course, Boris Johnson is fine now. So, I don't know. It just seems all very strange to me. Uh, I look rather British. Uh, okay, well, let's see. Uh, do I look, in your opinion, do I look more German, Irish, British, or Native American, or maybe French, because a lot of people think I look dark Irish. That I don't. I don't look. I definitely don't. I don't really look like an Englishman. Yeah. Oh, I look British. Okay. Well, I think I look kind of Irish and German. I look a mixture of Irish and German. Uh, so I've I've been classified. My phenotype is. Uh, is uh, Atlanted uh, Alpine. So I'm Alpine Atlanted with maybe some Brun or CM mixed, but I think I'm, see, the reason I'm not pure Atlanted, my face is too short, but, and my body though is very robust like Alpine, but I'm not short though. I'm, I'm like 5'11", which is like um, pretty good height, at least in the United States. Now I know I'd be short over in Sweden or Denmark, but um, so I think I'm a blend of Atlantic Alpine is what I am. So Celtic Alpine. So I have the same phenotype as Nick Fuentes, because although he's more Alpine than I am, I think. Uh, so oh really? To twenty thousand. Oh, I thought it was a hundred thousand. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Uh, so anyway, folks. Um, yeah. So I, I'm just. Um, I'm really praying over this thing. I think it's gonna. Pat, we're gonna be back to normal. I know a lot of people are very anxious because you know they feel like they're being, you know, put in a different kind of way. Um, a lot of children, you know, it's funny, all these urban liberals, they, they rely so heavily on the government 
so they don't know what to do. But the rural people, the rural people, they know how to grow their own food, and they know they know how to raise their children without public schools, and they know how to lot of they know know how to do a lot of survival things. But these urban liberal types. They're just like, oh, oh, everything's shut down. What do I do? I can't go to my yoga class. I, 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 I can't send my children to public school or private school to be indoctrinated. Oh, no, um, I can't go to the health food store and get my tofu and tofurkey. <laughs> uh, what, whatever shall I do? I'm going to get in my electric car and drive to my congressman and tell them I demand action. Uh, I, I demand a face mask and and a free abortion and, and you know these urban liberals just do not know what to do in a crisis and 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 I think we have to differentiate the between uh, being educated and being intelligent you can be very educated but really dumb and and a lot of people in the rural area especially Appalachia you know People in Appalachia, it may be very poor, but if you see pictures of Appalachia, you'll see very nice homes where people make their own clothes, make their own food. If you go to urban Detroit, Detroit, where Tyrone lives, you're going to see a lot of people in the ghetto. They're on the government. They can't do anything for themselves. They're not resourceful. But the so-called poor southern whites who live in the mountains, they have clean water. They have food. Like, look at Dolly Parton. She came from the, the hills of Tennessee, and she's a billionaire. And people like to say people from Appalachia are stupid, but I think people from Appalachia are, are very resourceful people. It comes from their independent Scotch-Irish heritage. Um, I actually have a few ancestors from Appalachia. <clears throat> they were down around uh, Botetot County, Virginia. Um, uh, oh, Giles, Virginia, that's where they were, and they were mostly German and some Scotch-Irish that settled down there on my family tree, and I think they were Hessian, I think, but they come from German royalty, actually. They traced back to German royalty, and they ended up in the hills of Virginia. But when I think about people from Appalachia, they're so resourceful. They they have a sense of humor, but these urban, rural, these urban you know, Negroes or these uh, white urban liberals, they don't know how to survive. They're going to die. They're, if, if we have a crisis, the first people to die are going to be these urban liberals. Then the suburban types in the outer areas are going to be a little bit better. But the people that are going to survive are what the Bible says, the meek. The meek shall inherit the earth. Those are the salt of the earth people that live way out there yonder in the hills. Those, those are the people that are going to survive. You know, not these urban liberals that, that live in, in New York and L.A. and Chicago. Um, anyway, folks, that's my little rant. I just think that we all need to be prepared, especially spiritually. Um, yeah. I fit well in the south of Germany. Yeah. Oh, I do live in a city, and it's it's very liberal. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Um, so we're doing a. No, I don't think so. George Washington was six foot three. You know, I went to Mount Vernon, and I noticed that um, the 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 ceilings are big because okay. A lot of the plantation homes were in more mild climates, but uh, ceilings were pretty tall. But even even I felt cramped going into some of the ha the rooms in Mount Vernon when you had to go through some of the doors. And I can't imagine being six foot three in the 1700s. I think the average height for men then was five foot six or five foot seven. I think, yeah, imagine. Um, of course, George Washington, uh, I think he was sterile. He didn't have any children of his own um, because he got, I think he got the flu and it destroyed his, uh, his baby making skills. <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit of history for you. But, uh, but George Washington was very nice to his slaves. You know, a lot of people, I think they have to realize, you know, with slavery that, uh, See, uh, we, we can't judge uh, by today's morals. 
Um, owning a slave in Washington's day was the equivalent of owning a Lexus or a laptop computer. They were considered, uh, well, basically technology <laughs> equipment, and and so they didn't they didn't really see it as evil. I think they did later, but they were so used to it, it's just second nature. So when we're looking back and say, oh, they had slaves, they were evil. Well, but but they weren't. That was just second nature to them. They grew up in that culture. So they were born, if you were born on a plantation and you were, you know, born to own slaves, that's like like owning a car. Like it's something they were used to. And uh, so we can't judge them by today's standards, you know. But the, the interesting thing is that when slaves came over here from Africa, they were Christianized, and then they, they you know, became saved, and that's wonderful. Anyway, folks, happy Easter. Christ the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we can be thankful. We can, we can praise the Lord Jesus in the midst of this quarantine, in the midst of this uh, uh, pandemic. And, uh, and, and once this is all over, I think we're going to, uh, really discover a, a deeper spirituality and a deeper meaning, uh, you know, deeper purpose, a deeper calling for every one of us. Because, you know, we were so caught up in our cell phones and in our internets and, uh, and, uh, and our Twitters and our, and our um, you know, TikToks and, uh, you know, uh, zippy tubes <laughs> that we couldn't, couldn't get to the, the real important stuff. So anyway, folks, I'm very, I'm very pleased that I could share uh, some songs with you tonight. Uh, go to my website at meetskeltonsplace.com. And remember, folks, say a prayer for someone somewhere today. God bless you. And until next time, I'm Meet Skelton. Bye. <laughs>